Matrix and welcome to Was A Matrix. My name is Luni and today we're focusing on your final exam prep for economics. All you need to do to send your questions and comments through to us is search for Was A Matrix on all social media platforms as well as our WhatsApp line. All of the details will be on the screen. We've got a cool competition going on for you guys, so please stay tuned to get all of those details later on in the show. I've got Pearl, our sign language interpreter, as well as Tando, our awesome teacher. Thank you so much, guys, and over to you. Thank you, Luni. Welcome back, boys and girls, to another session where we are going to be having our final exam prep for paper two. Uh, I'm going to be tackling possible questions that you guys can expect in your paper two. Right, I'm going to start with our multiple choice questions. Uh, our question is adapted from, okay, just be patient. Our it's adapted from our November 2019 paper two question. I'm going to be looking at the multiple choice question one. Our first question says a characteristic of monopolistic competitor is that they are, right? Or is that they? Remember boys and girls, when we speak of monopolistic, the monopolistic competitor, it is a combination or it's a hybrid structure where we have a perfect competition and also a monopoly. Please don't confuse the monopolistic and also the monopolist, right? A says is that they produce homogeneous product, right? Number B says is that they obtain economic profits in the long run. C says they've got full control over their price. And then D says they can easily enter and exit the market. So our answer there is D they can easily enter and exit the market there. Right, let's move on to the next one. 1.12 says, a social benefit is the sum of a private benefit and, let's look at A. A says it's the sum of a private benefit and an external benefit, right? B says an internal benefit. C says a private cost. Then D says a marginal cost there. Right, so when we're speaking of a social benefit, we are looking at something that is going to be beneficial, not only to the purchaser of a product, but also to the community as a whole. So our answer there is going to be a private benefit and also an external benefit there. So our answer is A for that one. Right, let's go to the next one. 1.13 says, the supply curve of the oligopolist competitor is, Remember, guys, when you get a question like this, you need to underline the keyword there. The keyword is supply. A lot of the learners might make a mistake there by defining the demand curve because we have dealt with the demand curve quite a lot and we've tackled demand curve. But the question is not asking for a demand curve there. The question is asking for a supply curve. So let's look at our responses there. A says negatively. B says horizontally. C says positively and then D says vertically, right? So this is the supply curve, right? This is our supply curve there. And as you can see, boys and girls, our supply curve is positively sloped there. It's up, up, and down, down. So it's positively sloped there, right? Let's go to the next one, question 1.14. It says, in any market, the average revenue is the same as the right in any market so here it's a combination you are looking at both our perfect market and also in the case of our imperfect market what is our ar or our ar is the same as our what there a says our price b says our marginal revenue c says the supply then d says the profit right the correct answer there is a it's the same as our price so our average revenue is the same as our price for all market structures then. Let's go to the next one. During stagflation, remember stagflation is a type of an inflation. So you need to remember the characteristics of stagflation. We said stagflation is a combination of high unemployment, low economic growth, and also high inflation there. So a country may experience or experiences low economic growth and Remember, I've already said you are expecting high unemployment and also high inflation there. So let's look at for A says high employment, 
B says high unemployment, right? And then C says low inflation, and then D says limited development. Let me just stress, boys and girls, you need to be very careful about the wording or the way your words are structured in the exam. As you can see, A and B look almost similar there. It says high employment, and then B says high unemployment. Our answer in this case is high unemployment there. So look out for some tricks and some confusing wording there in your, especially in the multiple choice there. The same with C. C says low inflation. We are looking for high inflation there. Don't be confused there. Let's go to 1.16. The agreement to ban 12 of the most dangerous manufactured chemicals was addressed by the agreement to ban 12 of the most dangerous manufactured chemicals was addressed by A says the Basel Convention, B says the Stockholm Protocol, C says the Johannesburg Summit, sometimes they call it the Johannesburg Earth Summit, D says the Kyoto Protocol. Boys and girls, especially when we are looking at our environmental sustainability, I encourage you guys to familiarize yourself with all the protocols and what was discussed in each one of them. You need to be very comfortable to know what was discussed in the Basel Convention, what was discussed in the Stockholm Protocol, what was discussed in the Johannesburg Earth Summit, and finally in the Kyoto Protocol. In this case, our answer is the Stockholm Protocol there. Right, and then question seven says, which of the following is an example of an environmental world heritage site? Environmental world heritage site. Please, my keyword there or your keyword there is going to be environmental. Right? You are going to see that as we go or as we look at the responses, you are going to be able to pick, for example, Robben Island is not an environmental one. Environmental world heritage sites, these are of environmental significance places that deal with probably our fauna and our flora there. So Robben Island is significant for historical, it's rich in history. This is where our former president Nelson Mandela was held. So it's got nothing to do with the environmental part of things. So always look out and underline your keyword there. So A says Stekfontein Caves, B says Robben Island, C says Cape Finebos region, and then D says the Fredford Dome. Our answer there is the Cape Finebos region there. This is where we've got vast and very significant fauna and flora there. We've got a lot of that in that region. Right, let's continue to the last multiple choice question. It says natural resources are, are managed in such a way that it is available to present and future generations. Or when we are managing our natural resources in such a way that we leave some for future and we have some for present generations there. Our answer is A says preservation, these are the responses. B says pollution, C says renewal, and then D says conservation there. Again, a lot of us guys, we find uh, it's difficult for us or we confuse preservation and also conservation. When we are preserving, we are trying to keep and to maintain the environment in its current state in an unchanged manner. You are preserving. And then when you are conserving, you are using wisely. So our answer there is D there. So please look out again for the differences. It can come again as an eight mark question typically to say, differentiate between conservation and preservation. So I need you guys to be alert on that one as you are revising. Please make sure you familiarize yourself with uh, preservation and also conservation there. Right, this was our multiple choice questions. Very easy, again I encourage you, please do not leave multiple choice unanswered. Whatever you do in the exam, make sure you tackle that multiple choice, don't leave it unattempted there. Right, I'm not going to do the mix and match, I'm going to move straight to our one word, give a term. Remember what we've already discussed boys and girls, we said in give a term you cannot write acronyms there, you cannot write abbreviations in this one and you are allowed to use one word answers or a phrase for this one, depending on what the question requires there. Right, the first question says, a situation whereby our total revenue is equal to 
our total cost. So when our total revenue is equal to our total cost there, what are we experiencing? Remember what I said, as you are reading the question, the first answer that pops to your mind is probably the right answer there. I'm thinking of our break-even point there. I'm also thinking about our normal profit there. Right, now let's go and look at the answer. Right, oh, there is no solution there. So the answer there is going to be normal profit, right? I would accept normal profit there. I would also accept break even point. I would also accept break even point there. It is the point where the business is not making a profit nor a loss there. So those are the two possible answers that you can give in that type of a question. Let's go to the next one. An imperfect market structure, so you already know you're talking about an imperfect market structure, that makes a normal profit in the long run. An imperfect market structure that experiences a normal profit in the long run. We are obviously going to eliminate the a monopoly because that one experiences super normal profit in the long run. The same goes for our oligopolies as well. They experience uh, economic profit in the long run there. So we are only left with one market structure that experiences normal profit in the long run, and that is monopolist there. Monopolistic competition. So it's monopolistic competition. That is the one that experiences normal profit in the long run there. Right, we continue to question one point. Three, three, the period of time where at least one element or one fact of the factors of production remains fixed. The period of production where at least one of the, ele one of the factors of production remains fixed there. Right, our answer there is the short run. The short run, short run, or I would also accept in the exam, or examiner is also accept short term there. Short term. Right. This is typically a very hot question or one of the questions that they play around with in the exam. Either you are asked about the long run or you are asked about the short run. So I need you boys and girls to be very comfortable there with your definition of the short run or of the long run. Remember the definition of the long run, it is a period of time where all our factors of production are variable, or it is a period of time where all elements of costs are variable there, we do not have fixed cost in the long run. And in this case, you guys were asked for the short run there. We have at least one fixed cost in the short run there. So please be comfortable. You cannot lose those marks there in the exam. Let's go to the fourth question. It says people traveling to and staying in places outside their usual environment for more than, for not more than one consecutive year there. So we are looking at people that are traveling to and staying in places outside their usual environment for not more than one consecutive year there. Right, the answer is tourists. Tourists, remember when you are a tourist, you cannot exceed the year in a particular place there. Or I would also accept tourism there. So when you say tourist or tourism there, I would accept that one. Right, so the answer there, this one was straightforward. The answer is tourist or tourism. Let's go to our fifth question. It says, the type of inflation that measures price changes for all final goods and services, not only those in selected basket there. Right, so it obviously eliminates some types of inflation that only look at selected baskets. So here you are looking at all final goods and services there. So this type of an inflation is called an all-inclusive inflation. It's called an all-inclusive inflation. So all-inclusive inflation, right, looks at all final goods and services, not just selected goods in the basket there, right? Remember again, revisit your inflation a very important topic for the exam. Let's look at our last question for this segment. It says a license given to businesses uh, allowing them to pollute up to a certain level, a license that is given to business that allows them to pollute up to a certain level there. 
The answer here is marketable permits. Marketable permits. Marketable permits there. Right. So that is our answer there. Again, I need you to remember with this type of a question again, if you are given a question as an explained question for more marks, for example, for four marks, discuss command and control in the exam. You need to be able to specifically explain that businesses are only allowed to permit to a certain level. And the, if there are marketable permits for that particular period are used up, a business cannot continue producing. They have to either go and buy other marketable permits from other businesses or they can borrow from other businesses as well so that they can be able to continue producing there. Right, boys and girls, we are going to continue with our questions for paper two or typical questions that you guys can expect in paper two. For now, let me hand over to Luni. Thank you, Tando. Matrix, we are going to take a quick break, so please don't go anywhere. We'll see you straight after this.